Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest for the inaugural episode of the Andre Hall Show. And if you've watched Hawks basketball before, you might have seen him. You've definitely heard him. It's the legend himself, Bob Rathburn. Good morning. Thanks for coming on, Mr. Rathburn. It's an honor to have you. I really admire you. Well, thank your work. you. I appreciate the invitation. Well, first of all, before we get started about you, I just wanted to mention what an exciting young team the Hawks have got this year. I mean, we got the number one pick, drafted Risa Shea. Then we get Dyson Daniels, Larry Nance, Cody Zeller, Dominic Barlow, David Roddy, and so much more. I mean, how can you not be excited about Hawks basketball this year? What do you think? Yeah, I, I share that excitement. I was able to go to training camp this week and great spirit, great enthusiasm for the team. And uh, they really put in a good week's work of worth, a, a, a week's worth of work. And they uh, have the day off today as we record this, but back at it. First preseason game will be on Tuesday night. And I think we'll start to see how Quinn and the coaching staff want to put the pieces together to best optimize what we have. We're better defensively. We're longer, uh, a little bit taller at most positions, both things that we desperately needed from last year's team. Yes. So I'm very optimistic. I think we are going to surprise some people. So do I. So do I. All right, well, that's enough about the Hawks. Let's move on. I just want to start off by giving you a proper introduction. I mean, you've had quite the decorated career. I mean, you'll be 70 next month. Um, you are a, a Virgin <laughs> <laughs> You're a Virginia Sports Hall of Famer, obviously. You're a six-time Virginia Sportscaster of the Year. You were recently inducted into the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame, and you've broadcasted for many different teams, including – the Washington Bullets, Baltimore Orioles, Todd Wooder Ties, Richmond Braves, Detroit Tigers, Atlanta Braves, the Atlanta Dream, and obviously the Hawks. So it's, it's a real honor to be speaking to you right now, Mr. Well, Redmond. thank you. Yeah, it's been great. I, I've i been very, very fortunate along the way. I started when I was, you know, a kid. Um, I was 12 years old when I got a chance to do the half an inning of a baseball game. And uh, from that, I got involved with radio and later got into television, but I've been doing this my whole life. So it's been great. Yeah. Um, when I grow up, that's a career, um, that I want to get into. I uh-huh. myself aspire to be a sports broadcaster. Now, I want to ask you, were there any announcers that you looked up while growing up, look, look up to while growing up? I did. Um, you know, it's funny how it worked out. In my little radio station in Salisbury, North Carolina, uh, the guy who invited me to help him keep stats and, you know, work on the broadcast uh, turned out to be uh, one of the great baseball announcers and basketball of all time, Marty Brenneman, the longtime Mm -hmm. voice of the Cincinnati Reds. Now, we didn't know it back then. You know, he was just starting off his career. But that's that was a mentor of mine early on. And in my hometown, we hosted the National Sportscasters and Sportswriters Association. And they had annual awards. They would name, you know, you mentioned the Georgian uh, Sportscaster of the Year in Virginia. Uh, Well, they would come to Salisbury to have their annual award ceremony. And so when I got my driver's license when I was 16, I would go to the Charlotte airport and pick up all these great sportscasters and names that you may not be familiar with, but back in the day, they were the, they were the Mike Tarico's of the day. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were in the backseat of my car and I would have 45 minutes with them to ask them advice and how do you get started and what do you do and all that stuff. So that was, those were two things that were amazingly uh coincidental uh for me growing up in a you know a little small town you grew up in a small town and Salisbury not a lot bigger and to have that all happen you know when I was that age uh you know it was pretty incredible so I I had a, an advanced start with mentors that's that's great to hear um now obviously you've been all over the country Can you tell me what was the most interesting city you visited in your career? Oh, goodness. Um, (laughs) Well, I've I've been able to do play-by-play in, I think, 45 states. 
in my career. I've only missed like the Dakotas and Montana and yeah. a couple others, but I've been, got to go to Alaska, got to go to Hawaii. Um, I got to go to Japan, Tokyo and, uh, was amazing. Uh, we played yeah. Brooklyn in London, so I got to go there, uh, Puerto Rico, uh, Bahamas. So I've had a chance to go a lot of different places, not just in the United States, yeah. but, um, I would I would say um domestically you know it's all it's so cool to to do a game in New York you know I've had a chance to do a game at Shea Stadium uh, Yankee Stadium the older Yankee Stadium not the new one but Madison Square Garden and not too many guys had a chance to do that yeah. uh, but you know being in LA at Dodger Stadium opening day for the Braves was pretty cool um, but I, you know, they're all special to me. I, I get just as excited going to Oklahoma city as I do going to Toronto. So, um, it's just, it's the game and not so much the locale because when we go in, you know, it's a business trip. You're not there to sightsee. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Um, now you work alongside the great Dominique Wilkins in the, I do. yeah. And I just want to ask you, um, if you can recall, What's the funniest moment that you've shared with them while calling a game? Nah, there's so many. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story about me and Neek. When I was starting in Salisbury and I was on the air and I went to school full-time at Catawba and broadcast full-time. Well, one of the, my responsibilities was to broadcast Salisbury High School basketball. And one year, we had a really good team. And Washington, North Carolina had a really good team. And we met in the state quarterfinals, and that was the team Dominique Wilkins was on when he was in high Ooh. school. So I had a chance to broadcast Dominique when he was a high school player. And the game was in Durham in the state championship. Wow. It was a quarterfinal game. So that was number one. Then number two, I did when I moved to Virginia, I did Old Dominion basketball, Old Dominion University. And we came down to play Georgia at Stegman Coliseum in the NIT. Mm -hmm. And Neek was on that team. So I got to broadcast Neek as a collegian. And then toward the end of his career, uh, when he was in the NBA down in Orlando, I had a chance to broadcast him in an NBA game. <laughs> so I hit him at all three levels. And now yes. he's my partner. I think this is I think this is our 16th year together coming up. So wow. uh, what makes it? Uh, so much fun are all the stories that Nick tells about his playing days, you know, going up against Larry Bird and Bernard King. And, you know, his high school class was incredible when he was a senior and uh, you know, the stories of going to Georgia and all that stuff. So uh, every day is a, is a holiday when you're hanging around Nick, that's for sure. Never heard those two stories before. I appreciate you sharing. Sure. Yeah. While we're on the topic, what would you say is, I know this may be tough, but what would you say is the greatest play that you've ever seen while calling a game? Any the sports? Play. Oh, I don't know about the greatest. I, I would say there were memorable moments. Okay. Um, sure. I had a chance to do a Braves game when Andres Galarraga made his return from cancer mm -hmm. and he hit a home run. That was pretty cool. Very special. Uh. It wasn't one game per se, but when we won, what was it, 19 in a row, whatever, the 60-win season, uh, that was very special. you know. And it wasn't one game. It was just that whole period of time because it turned the whole city on. Um, you know, when you drop off your shirts at the dry cleaners and the lady behind the counter says to you, aren't our Hawks doing well? You know that the whole town is swept up with the emotion uh, of the winning. And so that was really great to see the whole city turned on, you know, much like they are for Georgia football or the Braves or, you know, whatever. But to have that happen for the Hawks uh, was really cool. Uh, so I would say those those couple of things come to mind quickly. Um, I'm trying to think of some other other incredible moments. I think, uh, you know, some of the stuff Trey has done, you know, oh, yeah. taking a bow at Madison Square Garden after oh, the playoffs. Yeah. Was, you know, that was pretty special. 
So those those are key moments. I wouldn't say, you know, like I say, it's it's not one game because you don't remember yes. the whole game, but you remember the those special moments. Sounds about right. <laughs> now, um, as an aspiring sports broadcaster myself, do you have any tips for anyone that's looking to pursue that career? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think, you know, maintain your curiosity, um, I think, is number one. Uh, this has changed over time. But those guys that I was talking about are in the backseat of my car, you know, veteran broadcasters, just drilled it in me that, that it's not about you. It's about the people playing the game and your audience is not tuning in to hear you. They are <laughs> tuning in to enjoy the game. And so your challenge is to make that game come to life by storytelling, by graphics, by the way you call the game, et cetera. And I've always kept that uppermost in my mind. I think for younger people today, it's a, it's a greater challenge to learn how to communicate well for a couple of different reasons. I think number one is the phone. Um, you know, we just don't talk to one another like we should. Uh, we'd rather text, we'd rather put it on social media. And that's not an effective way to communicate, particularly if you're like, you're sitting behind your microphone there. If you want to get behind a microphone for a living, you have to learn how to talk to people. Yes. And as you, as a young broadcaster is coming up through the ranks, Almost, I mean, a hundred percent. Everybody is going to be older than you, um, you know, until you reach a certain age. So you've got to learn how to speak to adults. You've got to learn how to look them in the eye and shake their hand and carry on a conversation. So I would say two things: whether or not you ever broadcast a game. I mean, you you may change. You know, you may get to be a senior in high school and say, you know, I thought I wanted to do that, but that's not my thing. There are a hundred different occupations around the game you know you don't have to do play-by-play -play. you can do reporting you can do studio you can do all kinds of things you could be a producer director audio uh graphics uh replays i mean there's a there's a million different ways to be involved and we're all you know for all of us we're in the nba just as much as anybody so mm -hmm. uh i would i would throw that out there too but i think the two big things for any student uh coming up do two things. It'll take you a lifetime to master, but do two things. Learn how to speak well and learn how to write well. I think if you do those two things, you could write your ticket pretty much anywhere you want to go and do anything you want to do. The speaking, I'm biased. I was a speech major in in, um, in college. Uh, it, those lessons, I think, uh, are life lessons that anybody can benefit from. But learn how to think on your feet. Take a Take an acting class. Uh, memorize lines, get, get in front of people, get on a stage. Uh, like when you're at school, do the announcements, uh, get on the PA and talk to everybody in, in the school, you know, Hey, today is spirit day and you know, blah, blah, blah. So all do all those little things that you can then write. Well, learn how to create a story. I would encourage you to get your own website, your and you can do it very inexpensively. And start writing a blog. If sports is your passion, just here are my thoughts on the 24-25 Atlanta Hawks. Boom, 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 boom. Doesn't matter that anybody reads it. They will, but it, that's not the key. The key is to forge the discipline of writing. That I'm, I'm, my goal, I'm going to write a column once a week. It'll be three paragraphs long, but I am going to have the discipline to write once a week. I'm going to do it on Saturday morning and it's going to post and I will do it again next Saturday. And so at the end of the year, now you've got 52 stories. Mm -hmm. So for an aspiring broadcaster that look what I can do, you know, I've, I've researched well, I'm well read. I'm, I've got a, a considered opinion about the sports that I'm covering. That'll help you get hired. It'll help you get no get somebody to read it, you know, get your English teachers to take a look at it and see what they think. It'll make you a better writer because if you can mm -hmm. write well, then you can transfer that in front of the camera. Yes. Because if you're going to be in the studio or you're in some way, it, you're going to have to write some script at some point. 
Now we're like from my game open on Tuesday night against Indiana. Um, I've got about two and a half minutes on camera. And so this weekend and Monday, we'll decide what we want to show. I mean, Trey will be a part of it for sure. Risha Shea will be a part of it. Oh, yeah. uh, but we want to come on the air with a, a theme, a story. Why should I watch tonight? And that's going to be scripted. Um, I, I I won't write it out per se. I kind of know what I want to say. Uh, but we will sync up my words, Neek's response, the pictures to support it. You know, Trey's highlights from last year, maybe Rishi Shea warming up for his first NBA game, all those things that will be in a script form so everybody can follow along, the producer, director, camera guys, audio. So that's how this works. But now at your age, just start the discipline of writing uh, and practice. Get You've got the tools right there. All you need is a mic and a camera. And now you can start broadcasting. And you can put it on your website. Uh, web, again, whether anybody or not sees it, that's fine. But get, gather emails, you know, subscribe to my blog, subscribe to my video highlights and, and start doing that. And the repetition will help you faster than anything you could do um, in school to get ready. I appreciate the advice, Mr. Redman. You're um, now, <laughs> thank you. I um, just wanted to ask, in the days leading up to game day, uh -huh. how do you prepare for games? Well, um, it's a twofold answer. Um, I know what you're asking. You're talking about the, the specific game. Okay. And I'll get to that. But one of the things that uh, I do, and I think all veteran broadcasters do, is our preparation is every day. Like if we come across a story in, july about the denver nuggets i can't use it today but i can file it but when we do play denver and we don't even have the schedule in july but i can throw it in the denver folder and then get to it as we get ready for that season so i would encourage you to have some filing system you know, whether it's the high school teams that you're covering, the college teams you're covering, or the NBA, have a system where you can save information. Uh, I use Evernote. You can, there's a bunch of them out there, but I would, any audio, video, story, bookmark, you name it, I just throw it in and then I get to it as I prepare for the year. Now, this weekend, you know, I'm going to be cleaning out the Indiana file as we get ready for the Pacers on Tuesday night. So now to get to the second part of your question, how long does it take me? Well, I would say on average, it's about somewhere between eight and 12 hours to get ready for a game, game specific. Mm -hmm. And that is the media guide, the game notes, the stats, the video that I need to watch, um, updating all of our guys, updating all of their guys, make sure I have proper knowledge of the rules, uh, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff. Then I got all the TV stuff, you know, the ads, the reads I got to make on the air for sponsors and what interviews I've got to do when I get there and all that. But I'd say eight to 12, basically a little longer in the preseason because there's so many more guys, you know, there's going to be 21 on each side uh, Tuesday night. Really? But I've been working on this. I didn't. I'm not starting this morning. I've been doing this for yeah. the last two, three weeks, and we've had meetings. And we've been we've had broadcast meetings in New York. Uh, we've met with the referees. We're up to date on the uh, any rules changes and stuff like that. So I'd say since I've been going at it pretty much since Labor Day uh, to get ready for the new season. That's it's definitely um, very interesting um, about the notes and all that. Uh huh. So I just want to know, do you study Hawks players um, before every game? Because I know oh, yeah. you're calling the Hawks. Yeah, okay. Or yep. just yeah. – Oh, yeah. Because, because I do cover them every day. Um, our audience, I would say, is like 95% Hawks fans. Yeah. And most of them watch every game. You know, it, it's sort of like a soap opera, you know, and every game's a new chapter. Um, and so for the Hawks fan, uh, 
I've got to have fresh, a fresh take, a fresh info. Not that it's going to be anything earth shattering, but I've got to stay on top of our guys. I it, just because you know them and I know them, there's still notes about that player for that specific game that I need to elaborate on, you know, like for Richie when we play Washington, you know, the story of him and Alex Saar, you know, going one, two in the draft is something we need to explore. Now I'm not going to mention that until we play Washington. Yeah. So it, it just kind of changes, you know, with the opponent and then, you know, whether we're hot, we're cold, the players hot or cold, you know, the stats, you know, he had a, he had a 30 point game in this building last year, blah, blah, blah. Those kinds of things that you bring out game specific. Yeah. yeah. So every day. Yeah. It's, it, this is studying the box scores, um, the game stories for every team in the league. I mean, it's all day, every day. So now preseason game started last night. There were three games, mm-hmm. Utah, Minnesota, Lakers, Boston, Denver. I just got, in my email, the boxes, and I will start my day-to-day filing system for everybody else. So when we get ready to play Boston, Denver, Minnesota, Lakers, I don't have to start from scratch. I've been doing it all along. But it's fun. It's a labor of love. It beats working. You know, it's not calculus. Yeah. (laughs) You know, the saying, the saying, um, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. I think that's true. I do. Uh, in, in terms of, I mean, you want to make money, but yeah. I think in terms of have the attitude, and this I think is easier in sports, have the attitude. You hate to go to bed at night because you might miss something and you can't wait to get up in the morning to to get going again. Mm-hmm. And I think if you have that attitude, then work does become fun. Yeah. Well, that's going to be it for episode one of the Andre Hall show. I appreciate you for um, taking the time out of your day to join me, Mr. Radlin. My pleasure. I'm getting ready to do my homework now. (laughs) Thank you so much. See you guys in episode two.